Hey guys, welcome back. So today's video is something I've been wanting to make for a long time now. I'm going to give you all a peek inside of what is in our nature journal backpack. A lot of new subscribers to our channel lately. So in case you are new, my name is Sarah and I am the homeschool mom of five kids. They are ages 13, 11, seven, two and a half and one. And today I'm going to talk to you all about what we carry in our nature journal backpack. Nature journaling is something that we have been doing in our homeschool for several years now. And just in the last year or so, I finally made the plunge and purchased a nature journal backpack. This is just a bag that I keep packed all of the time with all of our favorite nature journaling supplies so that we are always ready, whether that's at the park, at the beach, or in our own backyard. So today I thought I would just give you guys a peek at what I keep inside of our backpack here, all of my favorite go-to products, and just the items that we use the most often when we nature journal. Okay, so to start off, let's just talk about my bag here. This bag I got off of Amazon on. It is paraffin brand and it is just a nice canvas gray colored backpack. I love it because it has lots of exterior pockets and it also has these great belt buckle straps that I just think look really great. But the nice thing about it is, is that they're just kind of decorative. They actually have snaps on the back. So opening up all of the different pockets is super simple because they're just magnetic snaps. We have taken this to the park. We have taken this outside, carried it around several places. And because it is made out of canvas, it is a beast. It is going to last us forever. It will be able to take a beating, be weathered really well, and, and should last us our entire homeschool journey. It can hold a lot, and as a backpack, it has straps on the back, and it is really comfortable to wear. I have worn this. My kids have worn this um, as we've traveled and done different things. It has traveled out of state with us. We, we really like this backpack a lot. Now, this backpack ran around $40 when I purchased it last year. I, I think it's still around that range for to $45 and they come in a variety of colors. I will make sure to leave a link to this bag and all of the supplies that I mentioned in today's video down in the description box. Okay, so let's talk about all the things that I keep in our backpack and these really fall into three different categories. Number one, items that help us observe and collect nature items that we want to journal about. Number two is books, books that inspire us and help us to learn learn how to nature journal well. And then lastly, art supplies, all of the things that we use to actually create our nature journals. All right, so I'm just gonna start digging in some of the pockets here. All right, so first of all, in these side pockets, I keep items that help us observe nature. I keep a really nice pair of binoculars. These were actually my husband's. He's had these since he was a kid. He used them when he would go hunting with his dad. I also have oh gosh, this thing is old, uh, a scope, or just, again, something to help you magnify, look up in the trees at different birds, things that are far away. Now, I won't be able to link these exact items because they are probably over 30 years old, but I would definitely encourage you to invest in some type of nice pair of binoculars or thing like this. It kind of is nice if you have multiple kids to buy a couple. I know that can be a little bit pricey, but at least that way they aren't fighting over them and you, you have a couple to pass out. So with my crew of five, we have two items to look at things from a distance. Next, along that same vein of thinking is a flashlight. We have had times when we have done some nature hunting and nature journaling at dusk, at sunrise, at dark, especially when we are on vacation at the beach, and flashlight is really helpful. This is just one that I bought at Walmart or maybe at the Dollar Tree. It's very inexpensive, just an LED style of flashlight, and I made sure it was small and really lightweight so it didn't make my bag too heavy. Most people nowadays also have a flashlight built into their phone so you could also use that. Next in this front pocket I have all kinds of items that help us observe and collect items that we find in nature and a lot of these are geared more towards my younger kids, my toddler, preschool aged, that kind of thing. First a magnifying glass. Again this kind of goes along the vein of binoculars and that type of thing but a magnifying glass is great if you find a bug or a leaf or something like that that you want to be able to look at details a little bit more up close 
bought this at the Dollar Tree and it has worked really well. Now, something I don't have in my backpack that is on my Christmas list for my kids is a pocket microscope. They have these on Amazon and I will go ahead and link the one I'm hoping to get for my kids for Christmas this year. It is just a little pocket microscope that you can use. It has a little light built in and you can use it on the go to look at things more close up. So that would also be another really great item that I'm hoping to add to our bag this year. Next, if you follow my channel and you watched my Dollar Tree haul during back to school week, this is just the little bug collector, nature collector that I got from the Dollar Tree that Ezra loves. Actually, Leah and Mariah used this the other day. They caught a butterfly or a moth, and so they put it in here for a little while just to be able to inspect it and look at it. This is great for bug catching. It has holes built in, so there's air. It also has a little magnifying glass built in, but this, of course, is Dollar Tree material. It is not super high quality, very easy to open and shut, but I would not want to bring a critter into my house in this. I think it would very easily escape. These kind of came along with that little bug catcher, just some little butterfly bug net kind of things. These are fun, especially for my toddler if he sees a bug or something that he wants to, you know, catch in the net and look at for just a few minutes. Uh, these are just kind of more pretend play for him, but I keep these in our backpack just for him to be able to participate. I also have a couple of pairs of plastic tweezers. These are really great if you are examining something that you're not really sure if you should touch or not, or maybe your child is a little scared to touch. These tweezers, both of these came from the Dollar Tree. These blue ones, again, they are great for toddlers because they're really big and they can get their little hands around them and manipulate them very easily. But a nice pair of tweezers in your nature backpack is super helpful because you just never know what you're gonna come in contact with. I have just some run-of-the-mill Ziploc bags. I have a gallon size and some sandwich bags and I normally keep maybe a quart size bag. These are just for if the kids go out in the backyard or we're out taking a walk and they find something they want to collect and bring home and do more nature journaling about. I keep these in my backpack all the time. Now I should note that if you are doing nature journaling at a park or somewhere like that, you need to make sure that you are not taking anything home that you shouldn't be. Um, so just check your, your local rules and state park rules, but typically we only collect things at home or in our neighborhood, not at the park. Another item that I keep in here with a flashlight is just a little pocket knife. This is actually my son's pocket knife. I have a larger one that I keep in our vehicle, and this is really great to have on hand in case you have a branch or a pod or something that you want to be able to cut open to and examine the inside. The kids have even used this when we've pulled things from the garden and they want to cut open the tomato and see where the seeds are, or when we went apple picking and they want to see what's inside the apple, just having a little pocket knife is great to have in your backpack. Next, I always try to keep a couple of field guides in our backpack just to help us identify things that we are observing. I keep a Trees of Ohio book as well as a Birds of Ohio book. You can find field guides like these um, that will go with your state or your area of the country. And these are so great to help you identify what leaf you have found or what bird you're noticing up in the tree. I bought both of these from Rainbow Resource Center at a conference. They were $10 each. It was a great 20 bucks that I spent. Along that same vein, depending on what time of year we are doing our nature journaling, I like to throw these little fandexes in our backpack. This is a butterfly fandex and a tree fandex, and these are just family field guides. I have talked about these before in some of my other videos with um, presidents and states and capitals. There are a variety of different fandexes that you can find and use for lots of different different things in your home school. Um, but as you can see, this just has different butterflies that you can flip through and identify. And then each one of these gives you a lot of information about what type of butterfly it is and all kinds of information on the back that is so helpful when you're nature journaling. I'll be honest with you, the one thing that kind of can be a little bit hairy with these fandexes is that if you open them up too much, they can get a little bit tangled up inside of each other and difficult to kind of 
put back together as just one um, unit. So just be aware of that. They they can get a little tangled in your bag. This item that I always used to keep in our bag to help us observe things was a ruler. And this is just one of the rulers that I bought at the Dollar Tree this year. But I've actually stopped carrying this. And I, I saw a trick for doing this in your nature journal that I just thought was genius. I saw this from another homeschool mom. So what you do is you take the inside cover of your nature journal and you make your own ruler. Just, you know, use your ruler, go ahead and line it up and mark off all of the inches. And then you always have a ruler, a, something to measure with no matter where you go with your nature journal. And then it's just one less thing you have to carry. So next I'm gonna talk about books that we use for inspiration. Now. There are so many different books out there that you can use and learn about for nature journaling, but I don't wanna carry all of them everywhere we go. I have a couple favorites that I like to keep in my bag all the time, just to kind of give us some inspiration and some encouragement. My son and myself are both very visual learners, so having an example really helps us when we're working on our nature journals. So the two books that I always carry with me are number one, and I'm sure you've heard of this, Nature Anatomy by Julia Rothman. This book, oh, it is just beautiful. I love the simplicity of it. There is so much inspiration in here and information about things that you can do journaling about that maybe you wouldn't even have thought of. Um, birds, bugs, leaves, dirt, feathers. I mean, all kinds of animals, all kinds of plants. Uh, you know, just, just about everything you can think of. She gives you really great ideas on how you could create a nature journal about this. We just love this book for inspiration. Now, I actually bought this book as part of a collection. There is actually the Julia Rothman collection, and I will make sure to link it below. It came with two of her other books, um, Food Anatomy and Farm Anatomy, which this is great if you live on a homestead or out in the country a little bit. Maybe your kids are gonna nature journal a lot about maybe your farm animals and things like that they're finding in your yard, maybe things in your garden. I, I love both of these to go along um, with our nature journals. I don't carry these in my nature backpack. I actually keep them in our kitchen, but these two books are part of the Julia Rothman collection and I just, I, we love them. The other book that I carry with me, and it's a big one, it's a little bit heavy, but I very much find it worth it. This is The Law's Guide to Nature Drawing and Journaling, and this is by John Muir Laws. And this book is awesome. It is basically a how-to guide for drawing and observing things in nature. There are so many great ideas about how you can, for instance, learn how to measure things just with your hand if you don't have a ruler available. There are step-by-step -step instructions on how to draw, paint, and color different birds, flowers, plants, rocks. I mean, this book is absolutely amazing and it breaks down things in a step-by-step -step example. For instance, here is a ladybug step Step by step and it just takes something that may feel a little bit overwhelming for you to nature journal about and gives you the confidence to be able to draw it pretty realistically so this book is just great it is worth the wait um, to have to carry it in our backpack because we like to use it it really has upped our nature journaling game okay so now on to the art supplies and the things that we use when we actually sit down in nature journal so let's talk about the nature journals themselves that we use I bought these from Rainbow Resource and they are just a run-of-the-mill spiral art book. They have this really nice um, black cover. It's really thick and it's just a spiral notebook with art drawing painting pages in it. It has really nice thick paper and we have tried a lot of different nature journals. We have tried journals that have kind of the book binding. We have tried spiral. We, we've done a lot of different things. And we have really found that this brand in particular has worked the best for us, mostly because I was able to find this size in particular. Personally, I liked for our nature journals to be kind of a medium range of size. I didn't want them to be too small, but I also didn't want them to be too big because with five children, I'm carrying a lot of nature journals in our nature backpack. So this size right here seems to be serving us really well. This is a nine by six journal and you could use it kind of like a steno pad this direction or side by side. My kids all tend to use it side by side. They like having the landscape kind of 
um, paper orientation. My kids all tend to use it side by side like a book. They, they like having the landscape paper orientation, but you could also use it vertically. We have used this brand for our nature journals for the last three years, and I, I don't foresee us switching anytime soon. Next, as you can see, I have lots of different bags of art supplies. Number one, this is just a canvas bag that I bought at the Dollar Tree, and this holds all of our pencils. Now, I like to keep a couple different types of pencils available for myself and for my kids. First of all, just your normal run-of-the-mill Ticonderoga, you know, yellow pencils. These are our favorite pencils that we use, so I keep several of these in here. I also keep mechanical pencils, so that way you don't have to worry about sharpening if you don't want to. And then I also found these are just kind of a novelty thing, fun for my kids. These actual wood stick pencils. The kids feel very old fashioned using these. They love them. I got a big pack of them on Amazon um, and, and they're just really fun. So I keep these in here as well. That's another thing that the pocket knife comes in handy for is sharpening these pencils in particular. But I also keep a just a little a hand pencil sharpener in our bag as well so that we can sharpen our pencils or our colored pencils. And I like this one in particular because it houses all of your pencil shavings so you are not littering in any way. The next bag I have is our colored pencil bag. And I have two different types of colored pencils in here. First, I just have, you know, your normal colored pencils, Crayola or whatever brand you prefer, just normal colored pencils. The other type of pencil that I have, which we, we use the most often and love very, very much, are these water-soluble colored pencils. They are colored pencils that you can add water to and they turn into watercolors. They, oh, they are so fun and they are beautiful in our nature journals. My daughter actually received these as a gift for Christmas one year and now all of the us just love to use them as well. Next, moving on to watercolors, I do also like to carry with us just a couple palettes of watercolors. I like these really large ones that have 36 different colors in them and a couple of brushes. We really enjoy these palettes in particular, but I do also have just some, you know, more simple 12 or even the little Crayola ones, sometimes I'll stash in here. Just any watercolors will do. But the one thing that you can kind of run into that can be frustrating is if you're watercoloring in the field or at the park or somewhere like that is having to lug around water with you. Now, I do normally keep a water bottle with us when we are nature journaling and traveling in case somebody does need some water. But the trick that I have found that has worked really well for us are these watercolor brushes. And I have a whole bag of them here as you can see um, but these are from Amazon they are just these brushes that you fill they unscrew and you fill them with water and then that can you can squeeze them and make the tip of the brush wet and then watercolor that way so these they come in a variety of different tips for your brushes and these have just worked really really well for us on the go and I also stash a couple of baby wipes or paper towels um, in my pocket or in my bag in case somebody needs to clean their brush now as you can see I just have these in a zip Ziploc gallon bag just because I don't want anything to leak in our backpack. I am actually looking at buying maybe some reusable Ziploc bags or waterproof bags, but for now, Ziploc bags are working just fine. Lastly, yet again, in a Ziploc bag, I just did not have any more pencil bags this year. I keep some of my Statler pens, and these are my absolute favorite pens. I have all different colors. I buy these in a huge pack every couple of years or so, but these are just kind of their um, triangular pens. They're fine tipped. These are just great if there's something that you want to really highlight in one of your illustrations or something like that. Um, a lot of times I will use these to take notes and observations in our journals about what we're learning about. But keeping these like marker type pens has been really helpful for our nature journaling. Okay guys, well that's it. This bag is empty. That is everything that we take in our nature journaling backpack. I find that for mama, having everything all ready to go, already in a bag, it helps me to be a little bit more motivated to get us out there and do nature journaling. When 
I'm not having to run around and grab all the supplies, having it all in the bag, right in our closet, ready to go. This, this has really helped us. So I'm going to continue to make some more videos about nature journaling, how we do it in our backyard, how we do it at the park, how we've done it on vacation, things like that. So if you like this kind of content, please give this video a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe so that way you stick around and you're able to see all of the videos that will be coming up. And take a second and leave me a comment. Tell me what your go-to nature journaling supply is, the thing that you just cannot live without. I'm always looking for new things to throw in our backpack. Okay guys, well I hope that you are having a fantastic homeschool week. If you're looking for something fun to do, take your kids outside and try your hand at nature journaling. I promise you, you will not regret that you did. See you later.